Hey, my name is Shelly and this is my channel Shell Space. So today we're going to talk about the top 10 books that I read in 2023. 2023 was not the best year for reading. So I took a long break in 2022. I kind of got fantasy burnout and like reading burnt out, like just social media, everything. So I took a huge break and then I started back again in February. So I only have like 11 months really of reading. Not to mention, I think my reading taste has changed quite drastically. Before I was reading a lot of epic political fantasies, um, mostly because it was always recommended. And I realized that that is not necessarily what I always like to lean towards. So I feel like 2023 was kind of me discovering what I like to read. So without further to say, let's get started. So I'm going to start with three honorable mentions. Um, they didn't quite reach uh, like the top tier, my favorite, but they were really good reads and I had a lot of fun. And one is a reread and I can't really consider it a reread as like a top read, although I loved it. I'm only including new reads. So let's get on with the first reread and that is Rhapsody by Elizabeth Hayden. I reread this series. It was like one of the first things I read in 2023 and I loved it. This was one of my favorite series when I was younger and I only read the first three books of a, I think it's nine book series. So I want to continue on, but in order to do that, so much time has passed, I had to reread it and I was kind of afraid that I wouldn't love it as much as I did, but I'm happy to say that I did love this book so much. There was actually more to it that I really enjoyed and I was so surprised by the world building and the character development and just everything about it. I loved it. Um, is it perfect? No, it's not a perfect read, but for me, it's very nostalgic. The second book, Prophecy, wasn't as good as I remember, but I'm currently reading Destiny and I'm really loving it. So this is the first honorable mention and I really, 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 if I can get somebody one person to pick up this book and love it, I will feel so accomplished. I'm so excited to continue on with the series going forward. And next honorable mention is The Three Body Problem by Shishan Liu. I really enjoyed a lot of this book, but a big portion I didn't enjoy. So I really loved learning about our characters. Although this is like a very, I, I, I don't even know how to phrase it. It is first contact but it's so much more. It's like a look at humanity, a reflection of humanity and the terrible things humans do. And it's very eye-opening and I loved it for that. And I did really enjoy the characters um, and their backstories, but the actual three-body problem, if you know, if you've read it, you know what I mean. I did not like that. I was like a little bored by it but I'm going to continue on with the series because I genuinely think it's extremely well written. I loved the ideas behind it. I loved like the thought process and the experiment of it. All of that was really banger, but yeah, it was just like that chunk that I just, I couldn't, I didn't like. Like I said, I'm very excited to continue on with the series, but that will be a 2024 goal. So yes, the three body problem. And the last honorable mention will probably not surprise anybody because I just talked about it recently. And that is Hellbent by Lee Park Dugo. I had such a blast with this book. Like it just, it was one of those occasions that you just picked up the right book at the right time. And this was the right book. This was like Buffy the Vampire Slayer mixed with like dark academia, mixed with a whole bunch of other things. And I just, I loved it. I loved the expansion of the characters and the backstory, the more backstories that we received. Is it a perfect read? No, I mean, it's not for everybody, really. It really isn't. You have to like the genre and uh, it, although it is adults, I feel like it did read more like new adults than adults. Um, so with that said, you know, if you read Ninth House and were kind of like iffy on it, please pick up Hellbent because this really definitely ups the game of the series. And um, I'm really excited to continue on with the next book whenever that comes out. Now we are getting to the top 10. Most of these books are interchangeable. I don't have any like specific spot for them except for the first two. Those are like set in stone as my first top two. And number 10 is Liar's Knot by M.A. Kark. I care. Kark. I always say it wrong. Is it Kark or Carrick? I don't know. Liar's Knot. This is the second book in the Rook and the Rose trilogy and Although I really loved the first book and the third book, it's the middle book that did it for me. This book was just everything. I loved so much of it. Out of the trilogy, I would have to say The Liar's Knot 
is my favorite. I highly recommend this to people who are into political fantasy, um, who really like rich, like details and purple prose and all that stuff. Like it's just such a good series and I think more people should read it. So highly recommend it. But yeah, The Liar's Knot is probably my favorite out of the trilogy. Number nine is a kind of a new read and that is The Art of Prophecy by Les Wessie Chu really had a blast with this book. Like I think I need to read more fun books and that's my problem that I'm reading a lot of heavy books that are dense and the world building is so expansive and the political system is just so thick that I'm just really sometimes I just need to read something fun but not to say that this book is superficial at all like there's so much world building the character work is really great and the magic system is so cool it's very reminiscent to like um, Avatar The Last Airbender. Avatar is like one of my all-time favorite shows so obviously that is a compliment that I'm complimenting this book but this is more like Avatar mixed with like silk punk so I highly recommend this series. It is a little thick but it is a lot of fun and the sequel is out. I have not read The Art of Destiny yet. I will be reading it probably in early 2024 and I really hope this is not a trilogy because I think I would love this if it was like a 10 book series because it's so much fun. So yeah, this is definitely one of my highlights of the year. Another recent read is The River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I adored this book. It was just a cozy quiet book and it was like, a, again, another perfect time for picking up this book. I liked this book because it was very cozy, it was very whimsical, it's Scottish setting and like having Scottish ancestry myself, I really connected to it a lot and I loved like the whole world and like the the relationship with the island and the other folk like the fairy folk and the culture of that was just so good. The sequel was not my favorite maybe because I read them back to back and maybe I should have taken a little bit of a break but I this first book was just something special and I highly recommend it to people who like historic fantasy and fae that are like like real fae not like you know modern fae uh where they're like tricksters and they're very like they're like elemental almost so i highly recommend that for people who are interested in something like this because it is great oh and it's a love story enemies to lovers love story so if you like that you'll definitely like this number seven is the blight and stars by megan e o'keefe this is a sci fantasy but it's more sci-fi with like a little bit of fantastical element to it. This one is another enemies to lovers and as you can see I think I really love that trope a lot. So in this book we are in the future and humans are out in space and I can't remember if earth is still like if people still live on earth or not um, but basically it takes place in space. Big corporations run everything like governments um, and the people in those like the P like the CEO or whatever and all his kids are like royalty the, our main character is the son of one of these CEOs and he ends up on a ship that gets stranded on a like deserted planet and one of the people on the ship happens to be a spy but in this world um, people can upload their self-conscious in other bodies or like clones of themselves. So basically you can live forever if you upload your clones, but the more times you die of brutal death, the more damage it does, does to your brain. So this woman is uploaded into somebody else's body and she's basically a, a spy. And they're on this like weird planet and weird things are happening and there's a bit of a mystery. But for me, I loved it because it was very reminiscent to like early 2000 sci-fi movies where they're like all trapped whenever they go on a planet and the planet's basically trying to kill them something like that like it's it's very similar very similar feel to it and I really loved it I really do need to pick up the sequel I own it and I have yet to pick it up but that will be a 2024 task like I keep putting off everything else so yes The Blight and Stars highly recommend it for sci-fi fans and there is a romance in this so take it as you will so number six I don't actually have because I lent it to my friend and that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Um, I loved this book. I read it at like the perfect time in the perfect place. I have like, a vlog of that if you want to see it. Um, it was just just a combination of everything and I definitely need to read more Neil Gaiman books because it's got like that cozy kind of creepy atmosphere but very well written and it was just it was such a small book but so much was inside that small book. Um, I honestly, 
I don't really want to say what it's about because I think going into it blind is the best way. But yes, it is kind of like a coming of age story a little bit. And there's like, if you've read anything or watched anything Neil Gaiman's, there's always a creepy element to it. I highly recommend it to people who love weird, creepy, cozy, mysterious things. <laughs> so my number five is Tress in the Emerald Sea. So you're probably wondering why this isn't higher up on my list. And that is because I did not connect very well with the actual character Tress. I have a bit of a, a little, a little, I have a little bit of a nitpick against Brandon's work. And that is he writes a lot of the same characters, especially the women are very similar. They're very like, bookish almost and uh just very stubborn and quick-witted and you know that's that's fine but like it would be nice to see a main character that wasn't like Shalon that wasn't like Tress but with that said it is a really cute book and I loved so much of it it was a great adventure very reminiscent of Princess Bride which was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid so honestly it was just really great and I loved the world. Brandon Sanderson never lets me down with his worlds and this world was just so cool. I loved everything about it and the artwork in this is just so good. But yes, because of the character and I really didn't like the romance in it, it was kind of fell flat for me, but the story and everything else was just really great. So this is my number five. Okay, so my number four is a series. And I read this entire series this year and that is the Burning Blade and Silver Age series. This is everything that I want in a book. This is sci fantasy, which is strongly like inspired by Star Wars. And if you're new to my channel, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. I've loved Star Wars since I can remember, as long as I can remember, because my, my dad had like a VHS copy of it and I watched it nonstop at the cottage because that's all we had because we didn't have cable. So I remember watching Star Wars like on repeat constantly. I even watched the bad ones with like the Ewoks. I don't remember what they are, but I remember watching that when I was a kid and I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. And then I rewatched them again and there was, it was so cool. It was bad. Oh, it was so bad. They're on Disney Plus if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So honest, honestly, I picked it up because I heard that this was basically Star Wars inspired and it is. It was like Star Wars and Final Fantasy and like so much other things. And I just, the characters were really great and I just loved so much of this book. There are a few complaints I have about it. Mainly one of our main characters I could not stand. Oh my God. And I listened to the audiobook for the first one, but I actually had to switch out and read Eyes Only because I just couldn't stand the audiobook narrator for that character. So if you have listened to the audiobook and you have experienced the same thing that I have, try switching to the physicals because it is such a good book. I highly recommend it for people who love fantasy and Star Wars and you just want a good fun time. It's such a good book and it's so much fun. So yes, this is my number four. So my number three is also a series. I know I'm cheating, but it's my video, so whatever. And that is the War Eternal series by Rob J. Hayes. This book consumed my entire, this series consumed my entire summer. Um, I like basically read it back to back with like in between other books and it just consumed it. I loved it so much. In my opinion, the first three books are the most solid books and the last two are okay, but it was nice to get a conclusion to everything. I just realized I was holding up the wrong one. <laughs> I particularly love this one. Uh, this is the third book and it's from Cold Ashes Risen. This one was my favorite out of the entire series. I loved it so much and it really hit home for me because I really relate to Eska very well. I think she's one of the few characters in books that I probably would say is most like me. Um, she's a little bit, she's crazier than I am, for sure. So I really connected with this character and the mental health struggles that she was dealing with. And basically from the entire time that she was like 15 to when she's an adult, because I've been suffering from depression since I was pretty much 17, I really, really relate to this character. And this will probably forever be one of my favorite series of all time. And now Rob J. Hayes is now one of my favorite authors of all time. I also really love anything to do with like demons and taking down gods and just all of it. I loved it all, I loved it all. But like I said, the first three books, probably the best. The second two are just a nice conclusion, so. 
Okay, now we're down to my top two. I'm probably sure if you have watched any of my videos, you know which ones are gonna be popping up right now. So, without further to say, You Mean the Nightmare Painter is my number two. I love this book. This book was so good. And I like romance. Not, I don't like, I don't like overpowering romances, but I do like a good romance in my books. And I found that this romance is, was so good. And Brandon Sanderson finally, finally wrote a good romance book. Well, I guess Warbreaker was also good, but this one for me overtook it because there was more of a personal relationship that was developed in this book. And the art within this just made this complete. And yeah, I will definitely reread this one day down the line and I loved it so much. So yes, this is my number two. Surprise to nobody, my number one was the book The Wind Burn by Mark Lawrence. I should probably stop talking about it so much. But this was just an adult, to me, this felt like an adult version of Strange the Dreamer, but in a Mark Lawrence world, if that makes sense. Um, it was a dark, it was hopeful, but extremely bleak and dark. But because of the characters were so hopeful in this, it made it hopeful. And I love the mystery and like the plot twist and like the complete bizarreness of the story because you're you go in and you have no idea what's going on you have no idea what's going to happen and I love that in a book because I want to be surprised I don't want to predict everything that's going to happen that makes things boring for me so the fact that I had no idea where this book was going and I loved where it went and I'm so excited to read the sequel in 2024 so yes the book without wind burn is my number one I highly recommend it to everybody. I know it probably won't be everybody's cup of tea, but if you like Strange the Dreamer and if you like grim, dark fantasy, you will definitely like this book. So, all right, so that was my top 10 with three honorable mentions. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys have any similar top 10 or what your top 10 were. I would love to hear it because I lo always love hearing other people's top 10s. It's like one of my favorite videos to watch. You can always find me on Instagram and Goodreads. I am a little bit more active on Goodreads because I like to update my progress. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like and subscribe if you want to, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.